So you want to buy a new MacBook Air in this video we're going to find out what mistakes you should avoid, which MacBook Air you should get for what sort of usage, my best advice on which upgrades really matter and also compare it to the MacBook Pro and hey let's compare it to the MacBook Pro now. If you're talking about the MacBook Pro 13 maybe wait because there's a new MacBook Pro 14 supposedly coming out. So I'm not saying don't buy a MacBook Pro, if you need a laptop you need a laptop, hey, it's your life, buy it whenever, whatever and especially if you can get a deal on a MacBook but the differences between the MacBook Pro and a MacBook Air. This MacBook Air will have better graphics than the current MacBook Pro, but in all other areas, the MacBook Pro is superior. It has a better display, brighter display, wider color gamut, also has extra ports, up to two extra Thunderbolt 3 ports, has a touch bar, and it has a more powerful CPU and more thermal capacity, and that's about it. Now, I will be comparing this MacBook Air to a MacBook Pro and an iPad Pro, so sub up for that video, but let's get on to what mistakes you should avoid. Let's do it. Let's buy it. Okay, so there are two configurations, two stock configurations. Now, what you need to know is the one on the left has two cores. So as you can see here, dual core and the one on the right, quad core. Now you can get an i7 as well. I don't think the i7 is really worth getting because I think the i5 is best bang for buck. But that's the big deal. If you're just buying it as a normal notebook, and as you can see, the price is there, $999 or $1299. That's a big sort of price upgrade there. <laughs> you can actually pick up the base model for $900 if you go to Apple Education. So if I was just to search here for Apple Education... Now, of course, this is if you qualify, you have to be a student or a teacher. So if you went into this education store and bought it, we can actually pick it up for $8.99 and $1,200 respectively for those two models. So if you qualify, if you're a student, you know someone that's a teacher or a student or whatever, you know, it's $100 off with the base model. So anyway, most of you won't be students and lucky enough to be able to get that discount. So let's get into these two. Why would you need a quad core over a dual core? Now, if you're just using it for just normal web surfing, video, student stuff, productivity, Word, Excel, just normal productivity stuff, normal student stuff, normal just web surfing, etc., you do not need a quad core. Save your money, you don't need it. Just buy the base configuration with the 8 gigs, 256 storage. You all know how much storage you need. 256 is, you know, it's a fair amount of storage there. But yeah, you pay an extra, you know, $300, you get double the storage. So you can go up to 512 with this model. So I reckon the base model is the one everyone's going to mostly get. And if you're just a normal student or just a normal person that just does productivity stuff, the stuff I just mentioned before, just stick with the base model. There's no need to get a higher model unless you want, you know, more storage, which you could configure this for more storage if you wanted. Now, when would you need the quad core? So I think you need the quad core if you're a student and maybe you want to do some YouTube videos or maybe mash up some TikTok videos, you know, make them and then put them on your phone or whatever. If you're going to be doing something that requires a bit of heavy lifting of the cpu so if we're talking about desktop publishing if we're talking about you know photography photoshop lightroom we're talking about premiere pro we're talking about final cut iMovie anything that's going to tax the cpu i do recommend you get the quad core so you might as well just get the 1299 version now with ram and storage if we go in here should you get the i7 look if you've got the budget to get it you can get it. But let me tell you now, the best value you're going to get is going to this 16 gig, all right? If you've got the choice out of this getting the i7 and getting the 16 gig, get the 16 gig all day long, 100%. The i5 and the i7, there's not much difference between them. You can see 1.2 versus 1.4. Really, there's not much difference at all. It's not even worth it. Between the i5 and the i3 of the base model, so if we go back and we look at this i3 base model there's a big difference you've got dual core versus quad core okay so there's a big difference there that's literally double the performance basically but when you're going to i5 to i7 you're just talking about a frequency bump it's insignificant don't worry about it you know if you've got the money and you just want to spend it yeah 150 buy it. but i honestly think forget about the 150 if you've got a bit of extra cash get the ram and storage that's where i'd go ram and storage that's the place i'll be going first this would be the last upgrade i'll do don't make the mistake of thinking oh getting i7 is going to be that much faster no 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 you're going to get much more benefit out of 16 gigs ram 
than you will with an extra you know frequency of 100 megahertz or whatever and you're going to get much more benefit with storage because storage is at a premium and this really helps with resale value because when people want to buy stuff they look for the ram they look for the storage not so much the cpu especially when it comes to apple products it might be different for pcs but for apple products you always look for the ram and ssd storage because you can't upgrade these of course you can't upgrade the cpu either but definitely do not make the mistake of buying the extra CPU. Get the RAM, get the storage. Now, I do want to see what would be my best bang for buck one. My best bang for buck one would obviously have the quad core. Let's see what's better here. So if we have the quad core and we have 16 gigs, I'd rather have the 16 gigs and we're talking about $14.99. This would be my ultimate here the 512 is enough storage 16 gigs it's plenty for video editing doing the heavier tasks and even like chrome can use a million bloody tons of ram that's good but let's see if we can go lower than that 14.99 if we can figure up the other one do we have a cpu option with this yes i can so i can go to the i5 and with the lower amount of storage plus this yeah so it's a hundred dollars cheaper so if 256 is good enough storage because you can use external storage no problems but you can't add ram right so i would go this the extra ram and the storage if that's enough for you that'll be great remember these used to be 128 gigs so 256 is double that so for 1300 dollars you've got a beast of a laptop here you've got the four cores you've got 16 gigs for future proofing and doing heavier tasks and multitasking you've got enough storage which you can always add external storage so if we go back to the other configuration adding the 16 gigs that hundred dollars more because you get the extra storage now in the ideal world hundred dollars you might as well go for the 512 if you can afford it but that previous one I showed you with the 256, if 256 is enough, you can get $100 off this. But I think this is the ultimate sort of, you know, one here for $1,500. It'll be really hard to beat this laptop. So that's my recommendations. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.